Did you know that 99% of Google employees are not allowed inside a Google data center? In this video, I'm going to reveal what's inside Google's data centers. Watch until the end to find out. Google is very secretive about its data centers, but sometimes it lets us peek inside like a kid opening a candy store. Google also releases a yearly report to tell us how it keeps our data safe from hackers, spies, and aliens. Let me tell you some juicy details about Google's data centers and show you what's behind the curtain. A Google data center is like a giant warehouse full of computers, wires, fans, pipes, buttons, and people who work there day and night to make sure everything runs smoothly. It's the cloud. The magical place where Gmail, Google Search, Google Drive, Google Workspace, Google Maps, and other Google goodies live. So when you are editing a Google document, you are actually talking to one of its data centers somewhere in the world. According to Joe Cava, the big boss of data centers at Google, security and privacy of users' data is the most important thing for any data center campus. They have so many layers of physical and digital security that it's almost impossible to break in. Unless you are James Bond or Harry Potter. Now, let's take a peek inside a typical Google data center. Security checks for every individual start from the moment you enter the campus. There are six security layers that filter out aliens, spies, and hackers. Layer one, property boundaries. This layer basically includes signage and fencing that surrounds a data center campus. Every data center's architecture is designed following a particular theme. So from the outside, a Google data center is a piece of architectural art. From the inside, it's a maze of wires, servers, and nerds. Layer two, the security perimeter. This layer begins right from the main entrance gate and comprises security cameras, thermal as well as standard, 24 seven guards and smart fencing that can be operated remotely. The campus's smart fencing can sense touch and is anti-climb. There are also vehicle crash barriers everywhere to prevent heavy vehicles barging into the property. These barriers can successfully stop a fully loaded truck without difficulty. They can also stop a flying unicorn, but that hasn't happened yet. Your badge must be on the pre-authorized access list to enter a Google data center campus. If you don't have a badge, you can try bribing the guards with donuts, but it probably won't work. Layer three, building access. To enter any building in the campus, you must use an authorized badge and iris scan. Only one person can pass through the door at a time. If you try to sneak in with someone else, you will be greeted by a loud alarm and a spray of confetti. Layer four, security operations center. Google's information security team employs top brains from the industry. This team tracks every person or thing entering the campus and does a correlation analysis for a record. The SOC is a place that has professionals working every hour of the day. Everything that is tracked or recorded using the security devices is visible to the people sitting in the SOC. They also like to play pranks on each other using the security cameras and speakers. Layer five, the data center floor. This is the most sacred place in Google where only the chosen ones can enter. The rest of the Googlers have to worship from afar or watch through a glass window. The lucky few who get to access this region have to wear earplugs because the sound of data flowing is deafening. This is where the magic happens. Rows and rows of server racks, each one containing more information than a library. They are all covered with sheet metal to protect them from dust, water, and curious eyes. Each rack has a sticker with a code, which tells the engineers where to look when something goes wrong. And something always goes wrong. The floor also has a giant coil of copper that looks like a snake, but is actually a cooling system. Huge fans that blow hot air around, creating a pleasant breeze. 
servers that store customer data, but don't worry, they are encrypted and distributed so no one can read them. Not even the NSA. Thick black batteries that power the servers in case of a blackout or a zombie apocalypse. Layer 6. The Pressure Room. When the disks die or get old, they have to be disposed of properly. Otherwise, hackers might get their hands on them and steal customer data. Worse, post embarrassing selfies on social media. That's why Google has a crusher room, where they destroy the disks with extreme prejudice. The crusher room has a two-way locker system, where the engineers put the disks in one side and then take them out from the other side after they have been shredded. The shredder is a machine that can turn any disk into confetti in seconds. It's like a paper shredder, but more powerful. And more satisfying. If you thought getting into a Google data center was hard, wait until you see how hard it is to get out. You have to go through the same six layers of security checks again, plus a metal detection test. They want to make sure you didn't steal anything, like a disk, a cable, or a Google logo. The data center floor is where the magic happens. It's where the power is distributed, the cooling is controlled, and the computers are connected. It's like a giant brain, but with more wires and less neurons. The power comes from overhead high voltage bus bars, which look like metal pipes. They feed power to customized bus taps and plugs, which look like metal boxes. These plugs are connected to extension cords, which look like, well, extension cords. They are everywhere. The data center floor has different areas for different purposes. There is the main area where the servers are stored, there is the corridor where the engineers walk around, and there is the networking room where the routers and switches are located. Each area has its own security and safety features such as cameras, alarms, and lasers. The engineers who work on the floor say that it's the brains of the internet the engine of the internet. It is a giant building with a lot of power, a lot of cooling, and a lot of computers. They also say that it's row upon row upon row of machines, all working together to provide the services that make Google function. They are very proud of their work. The engineers also put a lot of effort into designing the data center floor, making sure it's efficient, secure, and sustainable. They use renewable energy resources, such as wind and solar power. They recycle water and reuse heat. And they keep the temperature at a cozy 77 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which they say helps their servers run better. And saves them money on sweaters. Exodus in Santa Clara, California was the first ever Google data center. It had been hosted in a rented space since 1999. You couldn't really set foot in the first Google cage because it was tiny. 7 feet by 4 feet, 2.5 square meters, and filled with about 30 PCs on shelves. Hosel, the current senior vice president of technical infrastructures at Google, recalls, he adds, it was a mess and it smelled like old socks. The huge operational cost and need for resources pushed the company to have its own data centers that are ISO 22301 2019 certified. At present, there exist around two dozen locations that host these large-scale public facilities. All of these facilities have world-class architectural and technological infrastructure and free coffee. At the time of filming this video, Google had its data centers in the following regions. North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Antarctica, and the moon. Well, not just yet. Google showcases its live list of data centers to the world and reveals essential information about each of its owned and operated facilities. Obviously, it's not a complete list. Some undisclosed locations are not there, as Matthias Wasterlund suggests. He also suggests that you don't ask too many questions about them. Although there is no official data, these giant units had approximately 2.5 million custom servers in total by 2016. 
The custom-built servers are produced internally by Google. Company policy does not allow their selling or redistribution, or their naming. They are all called server number one. Google data centers are the epitome of beautiful and secure architectures that embrace sustainability. The company is committed to test, optimize and improve their systems and security to ensure zero downtime and high-speed devices. It is also committed to innovate and boost its eco-friendliness while already being a carbon-neutral vendor. Tech Giant has the following goals that we can expect it will fulfill soon. Replenishing more water than it consumes by 2030, improvement in cluster design, scaling facility, operation speed and flexibility, and 24-7 carbon-free energy by the end of this decade. Besides this, Google is experimenting with wind energy, solar energy, in-ocean cooling energy, and various other renewable sources of energy. So, we can expect more eco-friendly plants in the near future. There are other hidden plans that can come up as pleasant surprises. As Hosel says, because we spent our own blood, sweat, and tears. I want others to spend their own blood, sweat, and tears making the same discoveries. So, as a spectator, we must wait to know what's truly about to happen. The thing is, even after learning all these cool things about Google's data centers, you still have a big problem. And that means you still need more information to fix that problem. And believe it or not, that key information you need is in this video right here. So make sure you watch that next to help you develop your IT career.